Uh, hello, folks. Uh, this is Dr. DeValley, and uh, this lecture, uh, the topic, it's a welcome lecture to Anthro 303, Food and Culture. Uh, in this uh, uh, video, we're going to be going over uh, some of the basics uh, of the course. Now, the description of the course is that it's about food, but food is not only something we eat. It is something we use to actually define ourselves. Ingestion and incorporation are central to our connection with the world outside our bodies. Food's powerful social, economic, political, and symbolic roles cannot be ignored. What we eat is a marker of power, cultural capital, class, ethnic, and racial uh, identity. Uh, the course will consider way, the ways in which popular culture reveals our relationship with food and our own bodies, and how these have become an arena for political and ideological battles. The course will address issues around food, culture, uh, and gender. Now, this is a three-credit course. And you are expected to vote 12 hours a week to this course alone. Students must have a York or a CUNY email account, and that account must be updated in Blackboard. If you are not getting my uh, email uh, uh, announcements, my email messages, it means your Blackboard address is not correct. You can go to the help desk in the library uh, to get it fixed. Now on the plus side uh, of an online course is that it's available 24-7 and you can budget your time to suit your schedule. You also do not have to spend time commuting uh, to and from school. Uh, if you do not have Microsoft Word, you can download a compatible program for free at openoffice.org. Also, make sure you have the latest Java software on your computer so you can view the course lectures. You can download that for free at java.com. And some files are in PDF format. You probably have Adobe Reader already on your computer, but just in case, you can download it for free at adobe.com. Uh, now the learning goals for the course. By the end of this course, a successful learner will know and be able to articulate about the following. One, the relationship between food and human culture, the symbolic and ritual nature of food, the relation of food to gender, and gain the skill from firsthand experience interviewing people from different cultures about their food preferences and food habits. In addition, you'll also be able to develop some specific skills about using web resources, experience taking a course on, uh, online, and also exploring uh, the course uh, as a potential uh, career dealing with this topic. <coughs> Excuse me. You <laughs> might wonder what I look like. Well, that's, that's me on the left. That picture was taken this summer in uh, a little town called Santa Fe in uh, the country of Colombia, South America. And on the right is a picture of my uh, beautiful wife, Vicky. Uh, that photo was taken a couple of years ago. Uh, she was outside waiting for a train where, uh, somewhere in Sicily, in Italy. I think, believe that's where that photo was. There are two textbooks we're going to need for the course. You can get them in the bookstore or you can get them cheaper used at Amazon or uh, barnesandnoble.com. And I've also placed a PDF copy of the books on Blackboard, which you can examine to see if you want to buy them. Uh, the books are Good to Eat, The Riddles of Food and Culture, and Fast Food, Slow Food, The Cultural Economy of the Global Food System. We're going to need both of these books for the course. Now, the required assignments. We have four different assignment areas. The first is an ethnography. You're going to have to write an ethnography of food in two families, which is worth 25% of your grade. And that's due 
uh, on, on or before uh, October 5th. You have just a little over a month to do that. There is the group book report, um, and that is 25% uh, of your grade. You will be doing that report with another class member, yet both of you are required to read both books, and that is due on November 6th. There'll be a history of a particular food paper, which is 30% of your grade. And then there are class discussions, uh, usually every week, each worth 2% of your grade. So together, that makes up 100% uh, of what your grade will be based on. Now, uh, late papers are not accepted for any uh, reason whatsoever. This includes your death or the death of any family members. Uh, you know the due dates from the first day of classes, so no excuses are possible. Complete papers before the due date to cover for emergencies and make arrangements in case, you know, something happens to you, God forbid, you die or something. The undertaker will know to send a copy of your paper that you finished early uh, to me. So you'll be able to get uh, credit for the uh, assignment. Now, one of the assignments is ethnography of food in two families from different cultures. Every anthropologist collects data via the process of field study. Field work involves observation, recording observations, usually a combination of descriptive and quantitative data, and interaction with the people being studied. In this assignment, you become an anthropologist conducting field work. For this project, you will interview two people from two different cultures, not of your own background, about their food habits related to their culture. The purpose is to get you some firsthand experience in collecting ethnographic data just as an anthropologist would. You can earn up to 25 points or 25% of your grade for this report. The comparative book report, you will need to uh, write a report of the two ethnographies we're using for the course, the two books. To do the report, you will be paired with another student to do this as a group project. But each group member will have to read both books. See the assignment sections for instructions on writing the report and its due date. And this report is worth 25% of your grade. And then finally, you'll have to write a history of a particular food paper. This assignment is a research paper. You are to choose a particular food from the list below and trace its history and impact on human cultures. The final paper should contain at least 2,500 words of double-spaced text uh, and not including any photos or charts. And this is worth 30% of your grade. The list of foods you can select are listed here and you select one of these as your topic. This list of different foods have had a tremendous impact on human culture and history. Not all of them in every culture, but these foods have affected many cultures and even changed uh, world events. So that's what your, uh, your uh, history of a particular food paper is about. The discussion forums, we will uh, over the semester, we will have several different discussions online about different issues raised in the text. Each discussion topic will be open for about a one-week period and then close. Uh, for each topic, it will be your responsibility to post at least one comment of a minimum of 50 words and to reply to at least two comments made by uh, classmates. The, the replies need to be at least 25 words each. Uh, to post your first, you must post the first assignment by Friday of each week of the discussion. Your replies to others' postings could be made at any time. In other words, you can't make all your posts on the last day. Uh, you have to participate in the discussion while it is current. The discussions are graded and worth 20% of your final grade. That's two, two points for each discussion. To earn points, you must have a minimum of three comments per discussion. There are no partial points uh, given. In addition, there will be two non-graded discussion forums. One is an internet cafe. Uh, 
this is for your place and I will keep out of it. Students are encouraged to email each other and to form study groups. The cafe is also a good place to ask each other questions or for help in the course or to complain about the assignments or about me. The cafe discussions are not graded. In addition, there's an office hours forum where uh, you can uh, ask any question you wish about the course and either I or one of the other students will answer you. There's no such thing as a stupid question. If you don't know the answer to something, that's a legitimate question, and this is the place to bring it up. Not to email me directly, but to raise it up in the office hours section so the other students can also benefit from your question and answer. Now, the Anthropology Program Policy on Plagiarism uh, or Cheating. Plagiarism is copying someone else's writing and using it as your own. Any student who is caught plagiarizing will receive negative points for the assignment equal to the value of the assignment. So if the assignment is worth 20 points and evidence of plagiarism is found, then the student will receive minus 20 points for the assignment. With the introduction of Blackboard 9, it is possible to check your work for plagiarism using the, self, uh, the safe assign function in Blackboard under the tools section. Any document that shows via safe assign to have more than 15 to 20 percent plagiarism is one I will examine closely for plagiarism. The 50 of 15 to 20 percent is allowed because cited references to bibliographic works used will fall on the copied text when it is not, as well as legitimate uh, uh, quotations that you make, assuming you uh, cite the quotations with quotation marks and uh, page references. Uh, if you make any quotes longer than three sentences, they need to be single space, indented five spaces on each side, and so they're set off clearly as a uh, a quotation you're making. And you should not have too many of these long quotes. And uh, that's all. That's about it. That covers the basics. Please download the syllabus from uh, Blackboard. Uh, print it out. Read it very carefully. It contains all of this information, plus the reading and the lecture schedule and the discussion schedule and all the assignment schedules uh, for the course. So that's it for now. Thank you.